Hello friends and antagonists, both minor and major MS, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Last time, we are in our third meeting now, third meeting of the club now, um, second, po second poetry reading, and after the whole reading, Monica just sprung on the whole club that we're going to be doing performative readings at the festival coming up soon, so not good. Um, so she's about to read first as an example, and she flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around at me. I glance around, not at me, I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sarah looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori, after the bar has been set way too high? Uh, I'll go next. Well, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice, has she read this one yet? Shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her, into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and a structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start, the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward to give Yuri the recognition she, recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. But we were caught so off guard she might, like, must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah. Sorry, I, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How'd you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, try not to think of it like you were saying to other people. Imagine you were studying it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it seems as it feels like her soft voice is made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I would probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said, when she, said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach in more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. This is a really good point, though. This is how writing works. This is a really good insight into um, into poetry readings. Um, you do get to, to hear a lot more of the depth of a poem from hearing it read aloud by the author or somebody who's good at reading. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Essa liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that, that other poems might not work that's quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen that kind of, I've seen poems of yours with a gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> Only you go before Essel. It's not like I compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Essel lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go, I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, they make me feel terribly awkward. I reset my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. 
don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called The Competitor Kind of like stomping a little bit. It's called Why Are You Looking at Me? Because You're Presenting. Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they, they bounce up and down and they're giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She comes back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of others will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Oh, this is so this is so vulnerable for her, jeez. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you want a much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem again to practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. Should probably find some other, other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised at putting all this effort in for the club. It makes me really happy. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but it's let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have to begin to, to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori or Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. What's such a big deal out of it? Must be a little nice, though. Well, ah, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Estelle, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I will come with Sayori once more. Let's save here after home real quick. All right, cool. Just to be, I'm getting a little concerned about saving because I know we're getting to the, to the threshold of like things getting messy. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to. I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um, uh, gonna save real quick. 1626. Oh, I'm, I'm dating the episodes, damn it. Oh well, whatever. The movie magic is gone now. Um, I just realized after like, what, six episodes, seven episodes now? Um, this is gonna be a mess. I don't wanna, I don't wanna skip out on my friends. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. You don't, you don't ditch your friends like this. This is a tradition. Sarah, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But, but. She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't ruin that just for... Wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Essel. You think I meet too much sometimes. You already would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I've, I've already made it in my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation, the conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sari to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. Go again. Poems again. Poetry time. Uh, that was good. So memories is, is, is a sorry. We, don't want, we want to get back to, uh, get back to Yuri mode. Termination. 
Disarray. Disoriented. Unending. Um, who does Depression hit? Uh, depression hits Sayori. Graveyard. Um, I'm trying to make sure we click the Yuri buttons, okay? Inferno, we know that. We know that works. Um, boop. <laughs> Melancholy. Interesting. Universe. Misfortune. Misfortune is Sayori. Okay, so the bittersweet stuff is all her interesting. Starscape. Entropy. Vibrance. Uh, frightening. So the scary, sort of horror -y kind of stuff is Yuri, but the sadness and melon and uh, more. But the bittersweet, the, the bittersweet, melancholic kind of stuff is more Sayori's realm. I guess interesting. Under quite oh, interesting. Oh well, that fits now. Infinite incongruence. Okay, that is that was definitely mostly Yuri. Oh man, the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh, must have a lot of determination. The word determination has, has changed since Undertale, so I'm like... Starting this club and I'm picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. What's a whole day off of school we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food? You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? It's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people. And I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Oh, I I I Ika, right, squid. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, the joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at desk in the corner room looking down at nothing. I'll walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Oh, eh? Your space not again. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? You just feel like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori just shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. I'm getting concerned about Sayori's health. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glanced at Sayori before, glancing, before trying to match with everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed, but everyone, everyone back to their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at the, at the desk. Essel, what's up? Alright, so we're going to find out what's up with Sayori next time, because it is our episode mark here. So I'll be back next time with more Doki Doki. So hopefully y'all are enjoying the series. I'm excited to find out more. Um, sure we get into the twist soon, so... Stay hanging there, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. But until then, enjoy yourselves, and peace out.